what can people expect? You're going to see adventure. You're going to see mystery. You're going to see um, the light and dark side of uh, this universe. Um, you're going to explore the bad guys. Um, you're going to see Star Wars from their perspective. And I'm just really excited for people to see it. I don't often talk about stuff being formulaic. Certainly, there's plenty of shows and movies that are formulaic. I mean, just take a look at the Fast and Furious franchise. But there's one franchise that has become formulaic in more ways than one. Star Wars. The last few shows have all followed a very predictable formula. The title character becomes an afterthought, the side character becomes the main one, and almost always, it's some combination of non-white and female. But there's another formula Disney seems to be running on us. The fan baiting formula. Exactly what are Disney executives saying about the Acolyte? And are they right to call the fans racist and bigots? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is Disney's Star Wars. Ever since Disney bought Star Wars, the franchise was irrevocably changed toward the worse. The writing became worse and worse, and the insertion of progressive messaging became more and more forced. No longer could white males save the universe. Oh no, move over Luke Skywalker. We've got a more diverse savior and her merry band of morons. With the progressive messaging came a whole slew of sloppily written characters that no one could relate to. The biggest one has to be Rey from the new trilogy. This chick shows up and completely girl bosses everyone into submission. The infallible Mary Sue trope was strong with this one. She could pick up a lightsaber, a weapon she'd never laid eyes on, and be proficient enough to battle a trained Sith Lord. Give me a break. And now Leslie Headland is making waves ahead of the release of The Acolyte, Disney's latest idiotic foray into the small screen. Headland is a very special brand of woke millennial hipster. She failed her way upwards out of NYU and into the lap of the big man himself, Harvey Weinstein. Given her meteoric rise, I bet she can give one hell of a hummer, but I digress. According to her Wikipedia page, much of her work focuses on what she calls cultural vandalism. Well, when you shit all over the entire fan base of a franchise like Star Wars though, it goes far beyond mere vandalism and into full-blown holocaust. Though, Hedlund isn't the problem at Disney. She's merely a symptom of a viral cancer that has metastasized all over the company. If we want someone to blame, I say we start with Kathleen Kennedy, because all the orders come directly from her. She's the one that's pushing this progressive messaging and installing loyal, woke foot soldiers like Leslie Hedlund. And it's Kennedy that's pushing a specific kind of formula, the formula of fan baiting. But what is fan baiting? Well, it's essentially a form of PR and marketing used by producers and film studios with the intent of creating fake controversy that garners publicity for a show and is used to explain away negative reviews. And that's the key factor here. Studios write and produce shitty shows, then they preemptively attack the fans by calling them racist, sexist, and bigots to hide the fact that their show or movie just sucks. Because why take responsibility for your bad business decisions? Ah, the hallmarks of woke millennial hipsters. Can't ever take responsibility for the fact that wokeness ruins everything. But what's that I hear you say? Star Wars has always been woke? Well, to that I would say you're only half right. It's true that Star Wars contained characters like Lando Calrissian and Princess Leia. But what none of these idiotic wokesters tells you is that characters like Lando and Leia were well written, whereas modern characters are not well written. Key difference. We as fans, not only of Star Wars, but of cinema itself in general, have absolutely no problems with having ethnic and gender diversity in our films. But as I, along with the critical drinker, nerd Roddick, and many others have said, the problem starts when agenda takes over storytelling. If you set aside story and character development and focus mainly on an agenda, doesn't even have to be a woke or progressive agenda, that's when we have a problem. But what's that, Paul? Do I hear the far right is a bunch of crybabies anyway? In his review of the movie Lady Ballers that was produced by the conservative media outlet The Daily Wire, the critical drinker lambasted the fact that the film focused mainly on a conservative agenda. 
The film's jokes were mainly a circle jerk for Daily Wire stars, and the film didn't really appeal to mass audiences, nor was it released widely. So according to The Critical Drinker, the problem isn't whether the agenda is left or right leaning, it's the fact that it trumps good story and character development. What most normies and quite frankly people in my own comment section have said is ugh, not another anti-woke grifter. Well first things first, I'm going to have to define what the word grifter even means because people have failed to crack open a book or dictionary and are using the wrong word to describe the wrong thing. A grifter is a person who defrauds someone financially. The word has been co-opted by both the progressive wokesters as well as normie apologists. Myself, Critical Drinker, Nerdrotic, and many others in our sphere of influence aren't defrauding anyone financially. All we want is good story and good character development. We really don't care if there's race or gender diversity, so long as the characters are well written and have a fucking story arc. And that's just the thing. We don't hate Rey because she's a chick. We hate her because she's automatically awesome at everything without having to put in the hard work to grow and evolve as a character. And come to think of it, the reason we're getting all these infallible Mary Sue types is because of who is writing them. Millennials like Leslie Headland have been coddled their entire lives. Participation trophies, helicopter parents, and being told they're God's gift to humanity has translated from these people into the characters that they write. Constantly being told how great you are is actually very detrimental to your own personal development. If you're automatically awesome at everything you do, how are you supposed to grow and evolve? I mean, last time I checked, that's the whole point of life is to grow and evolve. So is the Acolyte gonna be any good? Well, we've seen this formula before with the Obi-Wan Kenobi show, where producers preemptively started coming out and attacking the fans as racists and bigots just because there was a black woman on the show. Naturally, fans were pissed about the Kenobi show, not because of a black female character, but because the show was designed to be a conduit for that character. And that character was lame as fuck because she was very poorly written. Moreover, I thought the show was supposed to be about Obi-Wan, not Reva. Fans were right to be pissed off because they expected one thing based on the title, Obi-Wan, and got something completely different. It was a bait and switch. And that's just what's happening with the Acolyte. You have a woke millennial hipster in Leslie Headland pushing her Alphabet Soup Mafia's agenda in lieu of good story and good character development. Why? Because she seems to think that most Star Wars fans aren't as cultured as her coddled New York City self and that we need to be educated. You know who else likes to espouse re-education? Communist China. Do you want to be part of that kind of system? I didn't think so. You better believe that I'm going to be destroying every single episode of The Acolyte because I know what's coming based on that formula. But on the off chance that the Acolyte show happens to be good, I will absolutely praise it and talk about the positives. I'm just not holding my breath. But what do you guys think about all this? Do you think it's a bad sign that the studio is attacking the fans? And do you think the show will suffer as a result? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one.